And I'm Marilyn Fowler with the Women's Intercultural Network, and we're sort of the host of this particular session. And I'm going to um, thank all of our co-sponsors who are Women's Intercultural Network, and they are holding their session, which was moved without our knowing it to Wednesday. Uh, I've forgotten. Elahi, what? What's your next one? Elahi's was moved. I'm sorry. What's your next panel? They moved. Oh, uh, the next panel that I had, it was a, actually a workshop, Challenges and Opportunities of Technology for Combating Violence Against Women. It's actually a workshop, and it has been moved to Thursday, 4.30 at the church center. Okay. It was today at 2.30, but it was moved to 4.30. Moved to 4.30 Wednesday. Um, following us is another one of our co-sponsors, the San Francisco Department on the Status of Women. They are at 12.30 today. They have two others, which I don't have in mind. Amy, are you in here? No. She can tell you what those are later. We also have uh, the Coalition of Women from Asia and the Middle East, uh, which is uh, Elahi's organization. They're based in Southern California. And uh, let's see, I named uh, Southwest Airlines, of course, always co-sponsors us. And is Gloria in here, co-chair of US Women Connect? No, she's outside too. Okay, uh, I want to introduce you to my uh, longtime partner, Jackie Weatherspoon, the Honorable Jackie Weatherspoon, who was a, an important legislator in the state of New Hampshire who actually was the, le the first legislator to uh, establish Martin Luther King Day. Uh, was it just in New Hampshire, or did that go national? We were the last state in the United States to get <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, Jackie uh, does, <clears throat> has been training um, primarily African women um, for years on how to run for office, how to become involved in politics uh, through the Club of Madrid and the United Nations. Um, when she was legislator, she also abandoned the death penalty and we did... Lost by one vote. Uh, you lost by one vote. Well, there you go. You see, your vote counts. <laughs> She is involved in the Harvard Law School graduate um, group. She was Hillary Rodham Clinton's campaign chair in New Hampshire, and you'll remember how, how that went. Yeah. <laughs> she won New Hampshire. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Her organization is Decisions in Democracy International. And um, she has done amazing other things, but I'm going to turn this over to her, and she will tell you about the panel, and she will moderate the panel. Thank you for coming, and we will be in touch later. I'm going to stand in front of you because I think the closer that I get to you, the quicker our energy all comes together. Um, it's a great honor to be here. Um, on my shoulders, or I should say I'm on the shoulders of many, many women who have fought for the rights of women for so many years. Um, it's a collaborative effort. It's an effort, and some of you have recently seen um, the movie Lincoln. Um, when you look at all the things that, behind, that happens behind the scenes, we very rarely see the voices or hear the voices of women. But we know, whether it's the cooking, the cleaning, the sewing, uh, the actual organizing and so many movements always happen with the hands of women. Mm -hmm. um, we just celebrated uh, this week President Obama um, installing the statue uh, of Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. well, we also know that Rosa Parks is just a symbol of all of the people who refuse to get on the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. So we need those symbols, um, but we need the actual heroes. And each one of you in the room represent the sheroes that's going to take this effort forward that we're going to be discussing today. I don't want to spend a lot of time because the speakers that we have here on the podium, um, they were going to blow you away. Um, I'm very excited about, um, and what we know about any type of movement, let me just segue a little bit, is that if we don't have, and you know, 
what do they call that? There used to be a, com a commercial called Only My Hairdresser Knows For Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Only My Hairdresser Knows For Sure. So a person that we have here is the next generation, and, it's, and that's Mary Oloshuga. And you need the next generation to carry on any movement. And part of any movement is saying, I'm going to let go. So within Decisions in Democracy International, my group, we are training the next generation of women leaders. We are targeting women leaders from the ages of 25 to 45. We just did a segue from the White House office, Women in Public Service. So Mary Olashua, she's one of our international young awardees from Oxfam. She's also one of the awardees from the United Nations. And we found Mary through another thing. Mary has also just written an article for the Huffington Post. Mm -hmm. So this tells us we can let go because the next generation is ready to lead. Do you hear what I'm saying, my sisters? They are ready to lead, okay? And they don't use Clairol yet. <laughs> the, the young woman sitting next to Mary with the red jacket on, now you all have heard of spe Special Victims Unit, Lauren Order. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is her. Oh. Oh. This is Miss Audrey Moore. Mm -hmm. And she is the one not only who, who advises, but she has set up the unit as the Assistant District Attorney for New York City. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be giving us solutions today. And we have pamphlets that are going around the room. But we got her first because this afternoon she's going to be with the Cheryl Wudun group, Half the Sky, but she's ours first. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> so with sisters, there's sisters here, or you should know from Harlem. So you have lots of women after today that will support your work, that will find out ways to get the work further embedded into their communities within the New York City area. But as you know, Audrey, as well, there are women here from Sweden. There are women here from Japan. Some of the women from Japan are just waiting for the next session, but hey, you pick them up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have women here from Connecticut, Pennsylvania. And I'm happy for our sisters that are here from Connecticut because, as we know, there's uh, what has happened in Newtown and other areas. There are all types of systemic things on why violence happens. The last person that we'll have this morning is Alahe. We have worked together. She's out in California. She is the executive or the assistant co-chair for WIN. And she will be talking about women of the Middle East and the challenges that they face. So that's the introduction. And we will have, uh, let's start from the Middle East first, and then we will work our way back.